parallel position and let's get the shoulders rolling a little bit. Our next um, shape, so that was really just a warm up for the shoulders because the next shape we're going to try and make is our, is our like two capital D's back together, back to back, sorry, um, which is sort of how uh, most of the movements will go, if you imagine the two capital D's back to back. So we're going to take one arm forwards, I'm turning sideways just so that you can see, one arm forwards and I'm going to keep that arm by my ear as I open up my shoulder and my hip and circle back. So forwards, up, round and back. And then swapping sides, forwards, up, round and back. And this is relatively comfortable because I'm opening up the shoulder, I'm opening up the hips. I'm opening up the ankles a little bit. And then we're going to move into, from there, our two uh, so double arm circles all the way up and back. Imagining that you're drawing capital D. So I'm bringing my arms up, my palms are facing each other, my thumbs are up. Arms are going all the way up to the top. At the top, I'm just going to bend down a little bit so you can see, I'm going to turn my palms and try and pin the arms back. And if I turn sideways now, I can move even further away from the wall, otherwise I'm going to hit it. Arms are forwards and then up. Because I'm using both arms at the same time, I haven't got that lovely luxury of opening up the shoulder girdle. So this is it. This is as much as I can go. It's quite significantly different much smaller uh, range of movement than when I just did one arm on its own because I'm, because I'm letting that shoulder go. So just see what you can do, don't try and overwork it. Try and keep the head still, keep the spine lengthened. And the reason we do this, this is one of the 10 things to do every day, is so that we can keep that shoulder joint nice and free. We're not using the, the back and the ribs to help lift that arm up and, and open it out. So a really important movement. Great, then let's come back to the feet together again. Lose that gap between your legs if you're like me by squeezing the heels together, connect on the inside of your thighs. Let's take some, so sort of finishing off the shape. So I'm a sort of imagining that my capital D's were either side of me then, but with both arms that didn't really work out. But this, oh, we're now gonna take our capital D's, or we're gonna, this is called snow angels, basically. So taking the arms up at the side of the body, all the way up to the top, pinning those elbows back, coming back to the fingertips, touching the backs of the ears, so that you can push your ears forwards if you would like to, slight comedy moment there. <laughs> and then reaching the arms up again, palms are facing forwards, Palms are still facing forwards as I come down to the side. I'm going to lower my arms all the way down to the floor. Then I'm going to turn the palms to face the back, the wall behind me. And then I'm going to lift both arms up into the small of my back. And again, this can be a little bit dodgy on the shoulder. So if it's too much, just, just go to your bottom or that sort of area. Keeping those legs squeezing together. Then we're going to, and I struggle with this shoulder to keep it pinned back where it should be. That's all part of my personal struggle. Just notice the things that are going on in your body. From there, we're going to lower the arms down to the floor, pinning those shoulders back a little bit. Turn the palms, thumbs are up, all the way up to the top, and then to the backs of the ears. All the way up to the top. Palms facing forwards. Turn the palms, and let's feel the difference in the shoulders. But when you turn those arms, try not to let the shoulders round forwards there. So I'm trying to keep my chest open, my shoulder pretty much in the same place all the way through. Hands into the small of the back if you can. Lowering, I'm going to face the front for two more, all the way up to the top. And we're going to repeat this movement on the floor a little bit later on in class. Lowering lifting and we are there. Wonderful. So that's called snow angels. We're actually going to do that in a couple of different positions. <clears throat> Great. Let's mobilise the spine a little bit. I'm going to just turn at a slight angle. 
and I've gone to shoulder width apart, just inside my shoulders with my feet. Taking the chin onto the chest, rounding the spine, hands onto the legs, fingertips facing in, arching the back to lift the chest and look up. So a good old spine ripple. Nice big mobilising movement. Tucking under, arch the back, rounding. Great, and one more. And we're there, wonderful. So we're looking to just rotate, uh, sorry, not rotate, mobilise the spine. So that was on a sort of forwards and a, a coronal plane, a front to back plane, if you like. Let's have the feet outside the shoulder width apart this time. Let's pop the hands on the shoulders and let's just rotate, but keep looking forwards. If you can see yourself in the screen or a window with a reflection, maybe, or a mirror will be amazing. Notice that the centre of your head stays in the same place, but everything else is rotating around that centre, around your spine. Head is looking forwards. And then we're just going to let those arms relax. So with the arms relaxed and the arms thwacking the body at the end of the movement, you just get a little bit more oomph to this. Let those ankles roll. And then the final part is to add, look, looking behind you completely. And I've got a very boring, plain white wall here, so nothing to actually see. But <coughs> excuse me, it might be quite nice if when you look, you've got stuff, or when you're looking behind, you've got stuff to look at behind you. Notice which is your tighter side. There will be a tighter side. There will be a side where you don't go as far. So maybe go a little bit more on that tighter side, a little bit less on your easier side. And probably your tighter side will be your handedness side. For me, it's my, the right hand side of my body. So we've warmed everything up, we're rotating around, just so that we can get some nice uh, movement going, because when we want to draw, draw specific shapes, so we're gonna come into drawing a, a circle, <coughs> excuse me, a full circle with the ribs to start with. So feet are shoulder width apart, toes are facing forwards. The rib cage, I'm going to pop my hands on my hips, the rib cage is going to go around in a great big circle. Two or three, three or four in one direction and then changing in the other direction. When I pop my hands on my hips and I soften my knees slightly, it helps me to sort of stabilise the pelvis. So this could be, you could go in a square to start with, side, forward, side, back, side, forward, side, back, and then just smooth it out. I've gone straight into circles, that's absolutely fine. So make sure you've gone in both directions. So we're now, we've mobilised that rib cage. You might just want to do a little bit more wiggling about there, depending on how, how, that, how free that rib cage feels. Now I want to think about drawing our capital D. So we're going to sort of split it in half. And this class is all about really control. So finding the range of movement and then having the control and the awareness to put your body in exactly the right position. Put the body part almost in the right position where we want it. So let's first of all draw, and we're going to, seen from above, draw two capital Ds back to back. So we've just drawn a circle. We're going to split that circle in half. The line down the middle of the circle is through the centre of my body, from the front to the back. So let's draw that line again with the rib cage. Here's something we do, we do a lot in class. So I'm shifting my ribs forwards and backwards. From the side, it's here. Last week, oh, the class on Monday, we were doing this one. Elbows forwards, pin the elbows back. Basically, I'm shifting my rib cage forwards and backwards on a straight line. Now I'm going to go forwards with the ribs, round to the right, get to the back, forwards with the ribs, round to the left, round to my left, you'll be the opposite to me, I guess. But you, So you can either mirror me and ignore my rights and lefts, which is probably the easiest, actually. 
just mirror me. So go the same way as me as if you're looking in the mirror. Good, let's go the other way. Shift the ribs from the front to the back. Let's shift round from the back to the front. To the back, round the other side. So we're drawing those two semicircles back to back. There's not a great deal of movement in the ribs on their own for this. One more to finish it off. Wonderful. Okay, same thing with the hips. Maybe a little bit wider with the feet. <clears throat> Lift the rib cage off of the hips so that you can circle around. So this is our hula hoop hips. Even if you don't do anything else, this is great for just mobilizing. We've just mobilized the whole body actually today. Changing direction. And then again, let's take, so let's take an exaggerated, if I turn sideways, an exaggerated pelvic tilt and an arch. So tuck the pelvis under, arch the lower back. Tuck the pelvis under, arch the lower back. <coughs> Excuse me, pesky cough is still hanging on. It's actually quite dry in here as well. I think I'm going to turn that off. Okay. So uh, let's exaggerate that even more. Let's, let's, let's make it a much bigger movement. So rather than it just being a pelvic tilt and a, and a tuck the other way, sort of shift your hips forward, shift your hips back, shift your hips forward, shift your hips back. Just realize when you shift your hips back, there's a hip hinge, there's a mini hip hinge. We're hinging from here. Shoulders are pretty much staying where they were. Great, now let's take two back to back semicircles, forwards, round to the right and forwards, round to the left and forwards, round, drawing one half until you get to the back and then reverse it to the back, circle round, take the hips back, circle round, take the hips back, circle round, take the hips back, circle round, wonderful, okay. Thinking a little bit more about just the hip joint. Um, let's stand on one leg. So this is combining our one leg stand work as well. <coughs> Standing on one leg. <coughs> Lifting the other leg so that the knees opposite the hip. Let's draw, if you can, if you need a little bit of support, absolutely fine. Um, but just make sure you keep your tissue box nice and square. Let's draw a figure of eight with your kneecap. The figure of eight is lying on its side. My standing leg is nice and straight. Not completely locked out, but straightish. Standing up nice and tall. I'm going to change direction. This is hard work in the hip flex. Hip, hip flex. <laughs> Changing direction is always hard work. Doesn't quite resemble a figure of eight anymore. Ooh, and then I'm gonna keep that same leg, actually. I'm gonna lift it up as much as I can. I'm gonna open it out to the side, let the knee drop down. Lift it up, open it out, let the knee drop down. So now I'm drawing a great big semicircle. It's quite forwards, the semicircle, if, if you know what I mean. As in, I'm drawing it in front of me. So there's my straight line. From there to there is my straight line opening it out, lift, opening it out, I'm going to reverse, same leg, this is strong, open out, let it touch down, open out, let it touch down, Whew, this, this is quite challenging actually, challenging on the standing leg, challenging on the moving leg, hips are clunking a little bit, and one more, Great, give the legs a shake. Wonderful. Let's do all of that on the other side. So notice whether you're, hopefully you just stood on your weaker side for one leg standing. Although I feel like I'm, <clears throat> I've been doing that for so long, I feel like my legs have started to swap over a little bit. So knee opposite your hip. So what I mean is there, you're making a 90 degrees. And also opposite your hip is here. Here's my hip bone. That's my pubic bone. There. So, and, the, and that, that hip bone is the crisscross part of your figure of eight. It's a fairly narrow figure of eight. Standing up really nice and tall. 
changing direction of your figure of eight after a few. Figure of eight laying on its side. I didn't already said that. Already getting very grippy in my hip flexors because I was standing on that leg just now, so that it's already quite tired. Great, let's drop the leg down. I'm going to go outwards first on this side. I don't know why, it just feels nicer. Drop the leg down, so my toes touching the floor, semicircle round. Straight line, semicircle. And noticing the adjustment in your body, changing direction, lifting up, opening out. Because you've got this limb moving around, challenging your centre of gravity, challenging your balance, but it's all good. Making all those muscles fire up. Wonderful. Okay, there is one more, one more to do here. So that was us, our figure of, not our figure of eight, our semicircles were sort of, they, they were back to back here and the semicircle was there. Let's do the same thing on the floor. This is tough, I mean, we're only going to do a few. I nearly said we're only going to do four then. Maybe we will only do four in each direction. So start with the feet together, plumb line in place, maybe pop the hands on the shoulders. No. <laughs> hands on the hip stroke waist. Shoulders, hips, waist, maybe, yeah. And then we're going to, again, start on your weaker side first. Stretch the leg forwards, toe just touching the floor, semi-circle round. Am I going to hit the wall behind me? No, I'm not. Excellent. And then flex that foot and come in to be, don't put any weight on it, but just come back to the middle again. So from the side, so that's one, we're going to do three more. Forwards. <coughs> Carry it round, all the way behind you, keeping it nice and parallel. Flex the foot. Notice that both of my legs are staying straight. My ankle is the bit that's moving. My ankle and my foot are changing. I'm pointing my foot. I think that was the last one. I think that was the fourth one. I'm going to do one more. I'll do five for luck in this direction. Forwards, circling round, back to the centre. I'm going to face you again. On the same standing leg, it's tough. We're going back. Now we're semicircling round to the front, flexing to the back. Keeping everything parallel. We're trying to keep those hips absolutely still. Trying to keep both sides of your torso. That's number three. I'm definitely counting now. Four. And five, hooray, give your legs a little shake, wall on the other side, five in each direction, forwards, round to the back, and flexing to come through. So you will be very tempted to bend this knee as it comes through, I see it all the time, you absolutely don't need to, I've even got bare feet, so I'm sticking on the mat, I could get really stuck. But I'm just, I'm lifting up so much that I can flex my foot and bring that leg through without having to hitch in the hips. What number is this? Anyone know? I'm going to do one more back to the centre. Here we go. Change of direction to last set. Foot nice and parallel. No curly feet going on. Extend it away. Imagine we're at the beach, it's a balmy summer's evening, we've got a lovely bit of sand, not too much sand, but underneath our, our feet, between our feet and, the, uh, and the, the concrete path or whatever, and you're drawing a beautiful, lengthened, smooth all the way around as far as you can with your, away from your standing leg with that, that toe. That was it. Yeah, great job. Okay, let's take the legs nice and wide. Let's put our leggings up. Um, we're going to come into some wide leg hamstring stretches. So 
really wide, feet parallel, hands on the hips, yep. <laughs> Hinging forwards, keep the top of the head in line, keep your chin tucked in and then coming up again. We're hinging forwards until you find your biting point for the backs of the legs, trying to keep those legs straight if you can. The weight is pitched forwards over the balls of the feet. Ooh, holding it there. Let's take the arms out to the side. Great. So look, I'm, if I could see you, if you were in class with me, I'd want to be seeing this lovely parallel line, parallel to the floor, from fingertips to fingertips, across those shoulders as well. I don't want to see any of the top of your shoulders. If your head is too low, if you go rounded, if you go Quasimodo, this is what, that's what I'll see. All I want to see is the top of the head, the top of your, the top seam of your t-shirt, or your clothing. Great, and then from there, let's bend those knees and relax all the way down. So, uh, take the toes out slightly. Bending the knees, drop the hips down, straightening the legs. Nice and wide, really make sure your knees go over your toes. Breathing. So when I'm bending my knees, usually when we're doing hamstring stretches, if I bend my knees, it's just to release the stretch on the hamstrings. This is slightly different today, I want you to bend your knees and drop your hips down. So we're looking for a nice, deep, wide squat, if you can. If that doesn't suit you today, absolutely don't worry, stick with the hamstring stretches. Let's take the feet even wider still. Take them out to the corners of your mat, turn your toes out more to the corners. And let's go from side to side. Now this is a familiar exercise. This was, it's called the, <coughs> the Cossack Squats. We did it last week, on Monday, sorry. If you think it was last week, it was only Monday. Um, what I want you to imagine, well not imagine, but think about the, the line, the straight line that your hips are drawing as you do this. You're going from side to side. So because I'm bending my knee as soon as I start to move, and then I'm fully straightening the other leg when I get to the, the full extent, my hips are staying on the same line. Then what I want to do after a few of those is to straighten your leg in the middle, maybe walk your hands across, then bend the leg. Straighten the hip in the middle, then bend the leg. Straighten, so not straighten in the middle, straighten in order to bring your hips into the middle, so now your hips are drawing the curve. So now let's go straight line, curve. Two in each direction. Straight line, curve. Go curve from here, up and over. Straight line to get back. Up and over, straight line to get back. Wonderful. Let's turn, if you can, all the way around to the side. So that was sort of drawing a semicircle with our hips. Now we're going to draw it with our arm uh, and our shoulders. So we're going to take the opposite hand to that front foot. Make sure the knee is above your ankle. Drop the hips down. Get that nice hip, hip flex and stretch there. We're going to reach the arm forwards. Here's our straight line. It's parallel to the floor again. If I go in and out here. This is called the lizard. Reaching that arm forwards. Then we're swooping up towards the ceiling. We're looking at that hand with our eye line. We're bringing that arm parallel to the floor again, so it's touching the straight line. Then we're tucking the elbow in, the shoulder in. I'm trying to get my other arm out of the way so that you can see. And then we're going again. Straight line. Semicircle, tuck everything in to start again. Straight line, semicircle, two more if you can. As I reach that arm forwards, I transfer my weight onto that front foot a little bit. 
As I stretch the arm back, I push back into that back heel. All just to get a little bit more out of the stretch. If that isn't for you, it's absolutely fine. Keep your feet pretty much where they are. Turn around to the other side. Don't keep them in the same position exactly. Keep them in the same place roughly on the mat because you're now in the perfect position to go on the other side. Opposite hand next to the foot. Let's do this a couple of times first. Reaching forwards, imagine your straight line. It's here, it's parallel to the floor. Reaching forwards, taking that arm up, following it behind with your eye line, with your head, turning your head. Feel how your shoulders are completely rotated here. In the opposite direction, they're vertical. My shoulders are on top of each other. Tuck that arm in, tuck that elbow, touch that shoulder to the inside of the knee. Go again, four more. Up to the top, <clears throat> tucking everything in. Reaching forwards, reaching back. I think this is the last one. Might have done an extra one, just because I love it so much. Coming back to the centre, great job, walking those feet in, heels, toes, heels, toes, heels, toes, to a parallel position, rolling up through the spine, we're coming back down to the floor, on all fours for a change, I'm going to lower my monitors. So let's come on to all fours. Let's bring our feet and knees together and hands are underneath the shoulders. Make sure they're really nicely underneath the shoulders. Spread the fingers and the thumbs. Lift back of head and neck up out of the floor. Slide the shoulder blades back. And then we're going to draw um, a big, it's like a semicircle again. We're, we are going to draw a semicircle. Imagine a semicircle with your leg close to the camera if you're slightly sideways on. I'm going to draw the knee in as much as I can without my lower back changing. If I just put the knee back, no change. I've relaxed my foot. So I'm going to draw the knee in. I'm going to lift it out to the side, up as much as I can. I'm going to carry it round to the back. When it gets to the back, I'm going to drop that knee down and then go again. Draw it in, circle it round. So a lot of mobilising for the hip joint and also a lot of stabilising going on for the rest of the body, which is good. About, I don't know, between five and ten, maybe eight of these in this direction. And then let's stand the same leg, let's reverse it. Take it back, open it out, draw it forwards. So it's a, it's a slightly abstract semicircle, stroke capital D, but what I'm thinking of is that this bit from here to here is my straight line, here's my semicircle. I'm also trying desperately not to lean and compensate, so what can happen here is that because you're working on this leg, you go all the way over there, releasing that pressure. Uh, and that's it's quite tough. Okay, let's change this. <coughs> Here we go. So, lifting up, draw that knee in. Just, just do this a couple of times, just to test. So notice as soon as you release the pressure on that leg, make sure your knees start together, feet and knees together. If you're on a wider base, even if you're only hit width apart, you will have to lean just to be able to balance. We want to try and keep that to a nice narrow base. So draw that knee forwards, replace it a couple of times, notice that you haven't shifted, and then draw it forwards, bring it out to the side. This is a tighter side, yes. Try and drop that knee down, foot going up to the ceiling without too much movement in the hip. There will be movement, that's fine. Imagine if we were standing, when we were doing this standing work, I said to you about lifting the rib cage off of the hips when you're standing. 
Try and do the same thing here. Try and take your head forwards. Lengthen your rib cage off away from your pelvis just so that you create a little bit of space in that hip joint. And let's reverse, taking it back. That's the bit I find really difficult. Lifting the knee out to the side. And I'm very conscious as well, hamstrings are working, buttocks are working, wrists are definitely working, wrists and shoulders, core is working. I'm having to stabilize the rest of my body. It's hard work. Wonderful, okay, let's just, while we're resting a moment, big toes together, open up the knees, come onto your elbows, just do some sea anemones, that's tough on those wrists. When you do this, and I really mean do it properly, do it well, do it so that it releases the stress, don't just do it so that you're thinking, oh, this is a nice little break before I get to the next bit. Because as soon as you stop, the stress will ease off. But what we want to do is we want to go a little bit beyond that. We want to get those, that fluid going. Not just go a little bit, ooh. Don't pay, just pay lip service to it. Do it really well. So either sea anemones or tarantulas, if you're not overly, if that thought of tarantula <laughs> doesn't freak you out. Good, the reason I wanted to do that anyway, and you can do this next bit, uh, could you do it on your elbows? Yeah, you can do it on your elbow, it might be a little bit harder, uh, or you can make a fist. If you're going to make a fist with any of this work, thumbs are forwards, Thumbs are on top and make sure the wrist is nice and straight. So you're on your knuckles and those thumbs are forwards. So none of this going on, none of these sort of weird, weird and wonderful things going here. Nice and square. Make that really nice and strong. Uh, so that could be another alternative here. If you can, however, what I would like you to do, um, let's just do the arms actually. We're going to take a salute. <coughs> We're going to take a salute with the, the front, the closest arm to the camera. Have a little look first of all. We're going to repeat our snow angels, one arm, one arm each side, each, one arm at a time even. So we're stretching the arm forwards. We're circling it round, touching the hip, bending the elbow, tucking that arm in, and then we are reversing. In fact, I'm going to add to that. Front arm, do, do some on the front arm first, release the back opposite leg at the same time. So let's start here, let's start in a salute. Back leg is out the back. Nice and straight with that back leg, just toe, just brushing the floor. Hips and shoulders absolutely square. Stretch forwards, circle round, turn the palm. Think about that shoulder of that arm. That's the one we're after keeping it nice and level. This is tough work. Let's just have four of these. Last one. I'm going to swap to this side to do the other side. So, feet and knees hip width apart, which again makes it harder. Back leg away, hip stays square, shoulder stays square, reach the arm forwards, Come into your salute. Imagine there's a box below your, your arm now. You can't, all the way around, you can't lower your arm until you've finished. Stretch it forwards, sweep it round. This is my chargey shoulder. Ooh, yeah. Mm. I wanna try and keep that shoulder back and not let it tuck forwards and under. Lengthening away, sweep it round, coming into the salute. Hard work, just keeping everything still. Fully turn that palm, but be very aware of the effect it has on the shoulder. Two more, I think. And I'll make that the last 
one, and good job. More C and N is required, more tarantula is required. Great, all the way down to your backs. In your um, base position, we're basically going to take some pelvic clocks. This is very subtle. We were doing it in class a little bit before, um, before this week. So, and we looked at it on Monday as well. We looked at part of it on Monday. So find your <coughs> comfortable position on your back. <coughs> Specifically get comfortable, get to know your neutral pelvis. Your neutral pelvis for your own spine. I'm going to turn slightly sideways here, hopefully you can see. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll tuck this in actually. Tuck it in all the way. Um, yeah, okay. So, um, we, you know you're in neutral when your pubic bone and your hip bones are on the same plane. And then the curve of your lower back, different for, for everyone, but that's your natural curve is in place. This position is six o'clock on the clock. I'm just going to try and keep my arm out of the way. We're going to take a pelvic tilt. We're going to push that waistband into the floor. We're going to apply a little bit of pressure as we did on Monday. That's 12 o'clock. Roll back out to six o'clock. 12 o'clock, six o'clock. 12 o'clock, six o'clock. Now go from side to side. Three o'clock, nine o'clock. One side is three, one side is nine. I haven't got my proper, I haven't worked out which way my clock is facing. Now hopefully you can see, and maybe you can't see too much, so I'm going to go this way. My legs are staying fairly still. I'm tilting my pelvis. My pelvis is going on a diagonal line. Three o'clock, centre, six o'clock, nine, six, three, and I'm coming through the middle, going to nine. Basically, I'm pushing this part of my back into the floor, then this part of the back into my floor. So my pelvis is doing that. Notice when I do this, my, uh, if my shoulders are able to move as well, they would be moving, but they're not doing, there's none of this going on. There's no shortening, there's no change in the side of my waist. So, if we can do those four points, if you can hit those four points, you should be able to go round in a circle. So from six o'clock, <coughs> from six o'clock, we're tucking under, we're going to twelve. We're rolling round one side, past three o'clock, I guess, if we're starting at 12, uh, to six o'clock, keep rolling round, nine o'clock, back to 12. Go round in the same direction again. 12, three, six, nine, 12. Release and roll back out to six. Go again, we're going in the opposite direction twice. Tuck under 12 o'clock, roll around, reversing, 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 12, there's one quarter, probably a top quarter, which will be a little bit tighter, a little bit more difficult to apply pressure to, back to 12 o'clock and then 6 o'clock. Good. As the class is all about semicircles, we're going to do what we did when we were standing with the hips. We're going to tuck the pelvis under. We're going to roll around one side to go to six o'clock. We're going to tuck the pelvis under. We're going to roll around the other side to back to six o'clock. Twelve, nine and six. Twelve, three and six. Twelve, six. Three and twelve, back to six. Nine and twelve, back to six. One more each way. From six, rolling round three, back to twelve. 
Roll back to six. Last one from six, rolling round. Nine, back to 12, and then six. Whew. Hopefully that made some sense. It might be <coughs> a little bit difficult to get your head around. And I do understand that. Okay, great. We are going to put our hands underneath our hips. You're going to just put one hand on top of the other, one palm on top of the other. Put your hands underneath your hips. Nice, so it should be quite comfortable, hopefully. Um, yeah, you could put a cushion there if you wanted to. And then just bend both legs in and let your legs be quite relaxed. It's a little bit uncomfortable, I just feel like I'm squashing my hands a little bit. But I want you to be basically in a, in a, a fairly neutral spine, so I'm not completely tucked under. If I pull my knees in 100%, my lower back is all just pushing into the floor. I'm in a, I'm in a neutral, but it's a sort of supported neutral. It's quite an unusual position. I'm letting my feet just dangle and be quite nice and heavy. And then I'm just going to march the feet forwards and backwards. Toes might touch the floor, they might not. Have your knees quite close together and think of this as we're drawing the, uh, the straight line of the two back-to-back -back capital D's or the two back-to-back -back, or the semicircles. This is our straight line down the middle of the circle. So okay, so then we're going to go one knee away, one knee towards you. Then we're drawing the circle. With the knees swap over and then you come back together. Swap sides, the other knee draws in, the one, other one goes away. Semi-circle in opposite directions. So you're drawing the circle, the, the full circle at the same time with both knees, they're going, they're, they're each drawing their own half, if that makes sense, back to the center. So let's do four more. I'm gonna say left and right. So I'm putting my left knee in, I'm letting my right knee go away a little bit, not loads. And then I'm drawing my semi-circle all the way around, trying to relax the legs a little bit in the hip socket, bringing the knees back together. Now I'm pulling right knee in, left knee away, semi-circle round, back together. Left knee in, last two, back together, right knee in, and back together. Wonderful. If that was okay for you and you would like to continue, Two straight legs up to the ceiling. This is where the hands underneath the lower the back. The lower back will help. Beautiful straight legs. Let's just scissor those legs forwards and backwards a little bit. Keeping the feet pointed, keeping the legs nice and parallel. Same thing as we just did. If this is too much for straight legs, you can have legs slightly bent, but just keep them at exactly the same angle. Or you could repeat the same thing with the knees. So let's go one leg forwards, one leg back. I've got my right foot further forwards. Semi-circle round, back together. Left foot forwards, semi-circle round, back together. Right foot forwards, semi-circle round, back together. Your goal here is to try and keep the circle nice and even. Let's do a couple more. Last one. Semi-circle round, back together, and relax down. Wonderful. Take those hands away. Just notice, actually, if you um, if you have had your hands underneath all the time, apart from the fact that your hands might hurt a bit, but your pelvis should feel nice and light, um, as if it's sort of disappeared. Great. Okay, we are going to do some abdominals. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So hands at the back of the head. We're just going to take, interlace the fingers, we're just gonna take some uh, crisscross, interlace the fingers, hold onto your head nice and securely with the base of your, the heels of your palms, bring those elbows in a little bit. We're gonna twist and try and take opposite elbow towards the knee. For this, you do need to come up quite a way. You might want to tuck that pelvis under, as we did on Monday. On Monday we were here. We were strongly tucking the pelvis in under, but the difference is now you can't, you haven't, you haven't got that help to hang it off hanging onto your leg. You've got to try and use that upper body movement. It's quite strong. So 
So this might be enough for you today. If you want a bit more of a challenge, I'm imagining, I'm going to rest down a moment, I'm imagining that my leg, when I extend that leg, that's the bottom of my semicircle. It's, it's creating a straight line. Then I'm going to lift the leg up and over to bend it in, creating the semicircle part. <coughs> it looks like this. So we're here, and then I'm lifting up and swapping. Lifting up and swapping. Lift and swap. So I'm sweeping that leg up as it gets to the top. Just as I bend it in, I extend the other one. Lift, swap, and change position. Do, 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 do. It's not a very good semicircle, I will give you that. In fact, I've just realised from looking at it in the monitor, I'm drawing more of a quadrant. So, half a semicircle. It's quite tough. And enough. Oh, another rhyme. Let that head roll from side to side. Brilliant. Now we're doing the time. Oh, okay. Let's go to a brief bit of sideline on with the legs out nice and straight. So horizontal and vertical scissors. Lifting those legs up, keeping the, the insteps together, we're going to open and close. Open and close. An equal amount. Pushing that underneath side away. Working the inside thigh. Remember here the top leg has got loads of freedom. The top leg could go all the way up to there. Pretty much, unless you, you might be cheating a little bit with your hips. Hips stay still, but the underneath leg can only go down to the floor and then lift up again. So make sure the top leg does the same amount of movement. Getting those insteps together each time. Then let's turn the legs out in the hip socket. Now let's scissor the legs forwards and backwards. This is quite tough. My feet at their furthest point are as, as wide as the, uh, the short end of my as far apart as the short end of my yoga mat, no, no further. Try and make sure that your body, your spine is the middle of those legs all the way through. The underneath leg is difficult to, to push it back, it's also difficult to keep it straight, but try and make that happen. Keeping those hips as still as possible, and bending the knees, sitting yourself up, twill around to the other side. Pushing down on that underneath side so that just your shoulder and your hips are in contact. Insteps are together, we're opening and closing, opening and closing, drawing that top shoulder down. Imagine Lengthening the top of the head away from the feet. Keeping hips stacked, shoulders stacked. Lots of lovely work on the hips, the inside thighs. This was very much today as well about the whole pelvic clock thing. Really good for firing up those deep internal stabilising muscles. Getting them, helping you put your pelvis where you want to put it. So from here, I'm parallel at the moment. I'm going to turn my legs out all the way in the hips. Nothing has changed at the ankle or the knee. Nothing's changed at the feet either. It just looks different. And then I'm going to keep those heels brushing past each other every time I sweep the legs forwards and backwards. Keeping that pelvis still, keeping the waist lifted. Working really hard today.
or more. And that starts to feel about the same as the other side. Ah, to bend those knees. Sitting yourself up. Well done. Brilliant. We are finishing off on our tummies for the last um, version of the Snow Angels. Probably the, um, maybe the toughest, this version, only because you, haven't, you really can't cheat with this one. So, forehead on your hands to start with, open up the legs to hip width apart, push the pubic bone into the mat a little bit, just get your pelvis in a good neutral, connect the rib cage to the hips at the front. And let's just lift the back of the head and neck up a tiny bit. Not a tiny bit, let's lift it up so that it's in line with the rest of the, the shoulders and the spine. Bringing one arm into a salute. And then here's our snow angels. We're going to extend that arm forwards. We're going to sweep all the way around. When your arm is lengthened by your side, turn the palm up. Try and keep that elbow lifted. Try and keep that shoulder in the same place. Bring the hand into the small of the back. Extend, sweep. Let's come back in. Let's change sides straight away. So, sorry, I mentioned, didn't mention this bit. I have started with my forehead on my hands. When I lifted my head up so that it's all in line, I opened up my hands a little bit. So I've just got fingertips touching, four fingers touching. And then on the back arm, I'm going to come into my salute, trying to keep that elbow high. Stretch the arm all the way forwards, no cutting off the shoulder, cutting off that corner, sorry. But opening the arm out, the side is parallel with my body. Then I'm going to turn the palm up but try and keep that shoulder back and that elbow back oh, still hard on the side stretching it forwards turning the palm that's the nice bit actually when i turn that palm i can really feel that shoulder slipping in back into gear again bring the hand back and one more each side one more each side with the arm working singly one arm on its own at a time Last one. Extending. <coughs> a little cough. Okay, I'm going to start. I'm going to have a little relax. I can feel those uh, hips just tightening up a little bit, buttock tightening up a little bit. Reset yourself. Push that pubic bone into the mat. Connect the rib cage down. Lift head and shoulders. We'll have one arm in the lower back. The other arm, fingertips touching the temples. We're extending both arms at the same time. We're rotating. We're bringing them in at the same time. We're extending, rotating. Four of these, if you can. Drawing a semi-circle at the side of the body. That was the last one. And have a little collapse. I'm going to let my head turn all the way to the side and let it relax. And when I do this, I like to start with my head resting on my hand. It's not just resting on my wrist, actually, in the back of my hand. And then I just let that, I take that away. Try and relax, try and breathe. Try not to cough. <laughs> Go in the other side. If it feels uncomfortable at any stage, just hold it, relax. Maybe don't even go there on that side. See if you can maybe just free it up by breathing deeply into it. Take the hand away if you can and or you want to. See if you can move your shoulders around a little bit. And well done. Thank you so much for joining me again for live on YouTube. I hope to see you again soon.